What up, what up, Wimbush here. It just this morning, Unreal Engine 5.5 just released. It's still in preview, but since it's out, we're gonna take a look at what's new with the motion design tools. And before we begin, just in case you missed it, I put out a free course with Epic Games called Your First Hour of Motion Designer. So if you need caught up on everything with the motion design tools, make sure you check that out. Again, it's absolutely free. I'll leave the link down below. And of course, before we begin, you wanna make sure that you have Unreal Engine 5.5 installed. So you would just come over here once you're in the Epic games launcher come over to where it says new engine versions hit the plus sign and then you want to select 5.5 and then we're going to launch it from here and once you're done compiling shaders and the unreal engine project browser opens up you want to come over here to film video live events we're going to click on blank and i'm just going to leave it at the default my project so i'm just going to click on create down here in the bottom right hand corner and once you have Unreal Engine 5.5 opened up, the first thing we want to do is activate the motion design module. So you're going to come up here to where it says edit, come down here to plugins, and right here under search, you want to start typing in motion. And once you have that typed in, you want to select this one right here. Motion design is still experimental, but you want to click that on. And then we're just going to click on yes. And then down here at the very bottom, you will notice that we now have both of the storm syncs. Like before you had to type in storm sync to get both of these, but now you can activate these just typing in motion. So you wanna activate both of these just in case you wanna share your project files back and forth. And then down here, you wanna restart. Now with Unreal Engine restarted, I'm just gonna exit this out. Then I'm gonna come over here under my outliner. I'm just gonna select everything and then I'm just gonna hit delete. So we're gonna start off with a blank slate. And next we're gonna come up here to where it says selection mode. I'm gonna left click on this come down here to motion design and then right here where it says motion design kind of to the right in the middle you want to select this and that's going to put us in the motion design mode in which this is new right here where it says sequence or curves we can use this with keyframing but i'm just going to exit this out and then i'm going to come over here to where it says create defaults i'm going to left click on this and i'm just going to add everything here so i'm going to click on spawn and now if i come over here inside my outliner pull these down you should be familiar with this so we have our camera post prize volume skylight and directional light now the first thing we're going to do is jump right into cloners because there's a big update i think a lot of people have been asking for so over here on the left hand corner let me pull this out a little bit so we can see it better right here under actors we're going to come right here to where it says cloner actor and we're going to select it twice so it shows up inside of our viewport now i'm going to come back over here to shape and i'm just going to select the sphere so i'm going to select this twice so that shows up inside of our viewport as well but over here in the motion design outliner i'm going to select the cloner bring it down and i'm just going to delete the default clone click on delete then i'm going to take the sphere and i'm going to drag it underneath the cloner now i'm going to select the cloner and you notice the first thing that you'll see is right here where it says color we can now actually colorize it right here under the cloner settings in which if you look right here we can keyframe those as well so if i select this color and let's say come over here to about like reddish somewhere around there and then if i click right here where we have this keyframe property i'm going to left click on this you'll notice it shows up inside the sequencer and if i move this up a little bit more and let's select a different color so let's maybe do like green hit ok and then i'm going to hit the keyframe again so now if i come down here and i click on play you can see now we can actually change the color on our particles within our keyframe sequence now that's just one of the updates but if we scroll down here inside of our details panel let's scroll down to the bottom where we have create linked effector so we're going to create an effector and you'll notice right off the bat that these metal ones are starting to turn red and that's because inside the effector we can also change the color in here as well so if i change this over to like blue whatever is inside the effector is going to be that color but everything else is going to be green so you can have a lot of fun playing around with the particles and just changing out the colors and same thing here you can keyframe this as well but the big thing that i want to show you is if we come down here to where it says forces and forces enabled i'm going to select this and then i'm just going to scroll down a little bit more and let's try maybe attraction first so i'm going to select the attraction and you notice before that we had all of our clones they just intersect each other but with the new update we can actually have these collide with each other so i'm going to select the cloner inside the outliner and then i'm going to scroll my details panel all the way to the bottom and right here under collisions you might notice now we have surface collisions and we have particle collisions so if i select on particle collision you can see now they're actually banging into each other 
and they're moving off screen. So now you can actually have your cloners collide with each other, which before you can only do that with the Niagara particles, which is a really big update for us. Now, I know that's a big update. A lot of people have been asking for They wanted to just have the cloners be able to collide with each other. So that's exciting, but we can also have them collide with surfaces as well. Let me show you how. So I'm just gonna come over here to we have quickly add the project and I'm just gonna come down here to shapes and just let's add a cube. So I'm gonna move my cube over to the center and actually let's move it over to the right. And we're just gonna make this a little bit larger somewhere around there. We're just making a wall and then I'm gonna hold down the alt key, left click, and I'm just gonna make a copy of it. And then I'm gonna select the cloner here and I'm gonna come down here in my details panel on the right hand side. We're gonna come back down to where it says collisions. And now I'm gonna select surface collisions. Now, any type of mesh that we have in here, that's gonna activate that as a surface. So now if I hit particle collision enabled, watch what happens. See, now it's bouncing off the surface there, which that's another big update. So now we can't only have the particles collide with each other, we can have them collide with meshes as well. Now looking back inside effectors, if I look at my details panel and come down here, you notice that we have a couple of more forces added as well. So we have drag force and we have vector force enabled there as well. And so what, let's do attraction again. And then if I click on drag enabled, now this is just gonna drag the effect that's happening there. So if I drag it up by maybe like five, you can see how it's starting to really slow that down because it's adding a drag to it. So those are some nice quality of life updates that we have with the cloner. But now let's move on to my favorite feature, which is the material designer. So now with the material designer, we have a lot more flexibility when building out materials. Let me show you how. So I'm gonna start off by coming over here to 2D shape, and then I'm gonna double click on rectangle so that we have our flat 2D rectangle in here. And then inside my details panel, I'm just gonna make this a little bit larger. Let's just say 350, somewhere around there. So with this rectangle selected, I'm gonna come up here to material designer, and you'll notice now this looks completely different. So now it's asking us what type of material type we want. So we could do PBRs now, or we could just do opaque, emissive, translucent, or we could do everything just all together. And so I'm just gonna click on all just so we can see what's happening here. So I'm gonna click on continue now, and you'll notice this window looks completely different than it did inside of 5.4, but now it's giving us more flexibility because we can select the PBR channel all separately. So we could do just base color, emissive, rough, specular, metallic, normal, etc. So let's just start off with the base color. So if I come down here and I have my cartoon character here, I'm just gonna left click and bring it under texture. And it's gonna do compiling shaders. I think that's because it's preview. Every time I did something with the material designer, it's gonna do compiling shaders, but it doesn't take that long. And just like before, now we have our material in there, but it's actually being affected by the light inside of our scene. So our way of getting around that is, let me come down here and I'm just gonna make a new solid and then I'm just going to delete that one we just added in there. And I'm going to come over here to emissive color. So same thing. I'm just going to select my character, bring them under here. But now I'm going to come over here to global settings. And where it says shading model, where it says default lit, I'm going to do unlit. So now we have our character in here. We have our alpha channel. If you want to see the alpha channel, let me minimize this. I'm going to come back over here to rectangle, hit it twice. And then I'm going to come down here to where it says align the actors. I'm gonna come down here to where it's gonna just stretch it overall. Then I could take my original rectangle and just pull it forward a little bit. And once I do, you'll notice that the alpha channel is not in here, right? Cause we have to do one more setting. So I'm gonna come back to material designer and then I'm gonna come down here to where it says blend mode opaque. I'm gonna do mask. So now with my blend mode under mask, if I come over here to opacity mask and I'm gonna select this right one right here cause this is gonna be our mask. I'm just gonna take my texture selected in there and now we have it mapped out so you can see that you now want to go through and actually mess with all the channels here because they're going to all affect each other so it might take some getting used to but just using the pbr setting with the material designer is going to give you a lot more flexibility whenever you're working with your materials in another mode that i noticed if i come over here to domain under surface we can now use these as decals as well now this is one that I have to figure out because it wasn't working as a decal whenever I put it on. Like you can see that once it's on, we do get the translucency, but if I come over and just like add another shape, so I'm gonna come over, add a sphere in here. Let me delete this out, bring my sphere forward a little bit. And then I'm gonna take this rectangle, bring them forward. 
So with a decal before, you would have a volume that engulfs that, but it's not doing that. So that's just something I'm going to have to figure out. And then of course, I'll do a tutorial on it once I get it figured out. So another new feature is if we're doing custom type, we can actually add the material designer to that one as well. So I'm going to come over here to the left. I'm going to come down here under actors and I'm just going to add in a text actor. So I selected that twice. I have my text actor in here and we could just put this in as Winbush, align it to the middle and let's just make it a little bit larger. So you'll notice with my text selected, if I come to material designer, it's not going to give us anything here. We have to activate it a different way. So with my text selected inside of my details panel, I'm just going to scroll down here until we come to right here where we have materials and this is create with material designer. So if I left click on this, now it's going to give us the same options as we had before. This time I'm just going to do PBR. I'm going to click continue. And you'll notice now we have the checkerboard and it's on our text. So now we can come through under base color and we can just add any texture that we want in here. I have this marble texture that I got off mega scans. I'm just going to left click, select, drag that into there. And now we have that instead of our text. So before you couldn't do it that way, you had to make an actual physical material the way that you typically did. But now we can use the material designer inside the text tool, which is really dope. And one of the last updates I saw, this is going to be inside the operator stack. So I just have the Unreal Engine logo in here and I have it selected. It's just a rectangle. And if I come over here in the top left under operator stack, I'm going to come down here right next to our details panel and I want to select animators. So now I want to select add animator and let's just do oscillate. So you notice right off the bat, if you use the animators before, it will automatically link it to the properties, but now it doesn't do that. So you have to physically do it in which if you come down here to where it says link properties, just click on the plus symbol and let's just do it to scale. So I'm going to hit all and you'll notice nothing is happening still. And that's because we have to activate it by telling it in the amount to what to do on a max. So right here under amplitude max, let's just do 0.5 for all of these. And you can see now we're getting this oscillated move. And the new thing that they added is we have time based loops now. So if I come over here to where it says cycle duration, let's just make this about five. So you'll notice now it's going a lot slower within our loop. And if I want to put like a gap between it, let's maybe do like a two minute or a two second gap. So now you'll notice whenever it goes down, it's going to stop for a couple of seconds. There we go. So it stopped and then it's going to go again. So that's what the cycle gap does. We can make it one second. That's going to make it even less in there, but you can play around with these functionalities in there. But that's the new thing that they added is the time based loops. So of course, this was just a quick overview of everything that they're adding. I'm going to do more deep dives into each one of these as I get more acclimated with these, but I at least want to put these on your radar just in case you wanted to go through and play with them. And of course, I did have that free course that I told you at the top of the video. Make sure you go over to that. It's absolutely free. Just log on. It's only about an hour long and it comes with project files as well. So if you want to take my project files, break them down, digest them, just go in there and it's going to get you ready with the motion design tools in no time. So once again, my name is Jonathan Wimbush. Subscribe if you're new. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.